Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If this is your first time here, I'm so happy to have you join me. And if you've been here before, welcome back. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. Easter, Mother's Day, and graduations are just around the corner. So chances are you're gonna need some wrapping in the next month or so. And if you have some plastic bags kicking around, you can make some pretty reusable wrapping. So join me in the lab and let me show you how. In my last video, I did a quick tutorial on how to fuse plastic, but I did want to talk a little bit more about the plastics in this video because part of what makes it fun is actually making some patterns and prints. And if you missed the video tutorial on how to fuse the, the plastic, I will put a link to that in the description box. But Basically, you're just ironing plastic. So you are melting plastic and you want to be sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated area. But a lot of people probably think of plastic bags in just some very basic colors, black, white, maybe some gray colors. But if you pay attention, you can find bags in a lot of different colors as well. So these are just some bags. I'm not even sure where they're from, but you can see there's some red and blue and yellow. So pay attention and kind of save those colored bags if you're interested in fusing plastic. Another place you can get plastics is used plastic tablecloths. This is a tablecloth my cat's got too. Um, so it's definitely not good for the table anymore. Uh, but if you know somebody who's having a party, you could certainly ask them to save their plastic tablecloths if they're just going to throw them away. Another place to keep an eye out is Newspaper bags, if anybody is still getting uh, newspapers delivered, they come in a variety of colors as well. And lastly, there are kind of what I call specialty bags. This is some just plastic sort of film that sort of was a substitute for tissue paper, I think. This is some more film. This is actually a bag from, a, from coffee, and you can see it has some fun gold color to it and then sometimes you get shipping packages that have some fun print or are if a fun color and they are all different weights but if you sort of test your iron temperature and how much pressure you need to put on things you really can find a lot of variety of colors and you can make some really fun prints so these are some samples of fused plastic that I have a little scraps left of. And the last thing I will mention about fusing plastic is that you don't necessarily have to use the same colors. So you can use your base layers as a color that you have a lot of, and then you can put the top color on the top layer uh, when you're fusing, and that way you're not using just a ton of colored uh, bag or colored plastic if you don't have a lot of that particular color. So I just finished fusing a few more pieces and you can see this is my red tablecloth on top and I just have some Walmart bags for the back of it. This is a piece of that, uh, I don't know what it's called, cellophane I guess. And I did end up putting a piece of clear over the top of it. I think maybe if I had it to do over again I would not do that, but um, that's how that turned out. This is the shipping bag that I that was kind of printed and colorful and I just used some clear bags on the back of it. And then this is that more of that cellophane that I just used clear bags with and I think it turned out pretty good. And here's the foil. For some reason it really wants to curl up, but I think it turned out really pretty. Now you'll notice that uh, all of these bags do crinkle up when you fuse them. So you're not going to have a perfectly smooth piece of fabric when you're done. Some bags iron a little bit smoother. This one is super crinkly, but I think it's going to be uh, really pretty. So we're ready to start making a gift bag here. And so I'm going to start with this piece. I have a little paper template. You can find them online to print out, or you can even just sketch your own out. They're pretty simple. I have some painter's tape. I have a cutting uh, mat to work on, and I have some scissors and my X-Acto knife. So I've gone ahead and put some of the painter's tape on the back of my template here. I think I'm gonna put a couple more pieces on just because I've used and reused this a few times and it does lose its stick a little bit. 
And then once I'm done with that, I'm just going to press it onto my plastic and go ahead and cut out my shape. So I've got my hot glue gun heating up here and now I need to make the folds in the plastic and uh, just follow whatever folds are on your template. You can fold them and crease them. They don't hold the folds really well, which is why you want to make sure that you crease them as well as you can. And so you can see that it does take a crease, but it does sort of relax over time, I guess is what I would say. So. If you are working with the plastic, you want to make sure that you're using the hot glue to reinforce any places where you want the plastic to really stay the way you put it, because it does sort of do its own thing, I guess. So now I've got all my folds in and I'm just going to go ahead and glue the bag together with my hot glue. And there you've got a little bag. If you want to, you can go ahead and cre uh, crease the side pieces and so that it'll fold. But like I said, these, do, these folds do kind of relax over time. But you can flatten them and store them flat. And if you want to, you can take another little piece of plastic and use it for your tissue paper. And you have a cute little gift bag. Another way you can use the plastic to wrap packages is to make little custom boxes. So I've already made the bottom here and I'm going to go ahead and make the top piece now. And it's a similar process. I've just got my template here. I'm going to tape it onto my uh, fabric and then I'll cut it out and glue it together. I guess I could mention here too that uh, if you are a purist and you don't want any of your print to show through, you can either use plain bags or a couple more uh, layers that don't have the print on them. Or if you're interested, I ha also did a tutorial on how to remove the print from plastic bags. So I will put a link to that video in the description box as well, but you can get rid of all of this print if you want to do that before you start working with the plastic.
Another way to use plastic when you're wrapping packages is to use it as the ribbon or cording. And you can do that by spinning your own plastic bag rope. I have another tutorial on that, which I will also link to in the description box. But you just use brown plastic bags to make some twine looking rope. You can use different colors, you can do different widths. So be sure to check out the description box for that tutorial as well. I could have just used this, uh, tied it like ribbon, but I wanted to make this box reusable, so I'm going ahead and actually kind of gluing this on separate pieces so that you can open the lid without tearing off the ribbon. Lastly, you don't want to forget about the decorating of your packages, and there's lots of different ways to do that with plastic bags. In a previous video, I made these flowers and butterflies from the plastic bag rope that I have a tutorial for, and so you can certainly make things like that to decorate your packages with. Also, when you're cutting out your bags, you're going to have a lot of scraps left over. Hang on to those because you can cut out little shapes to make decorative flowers. You can do silhouettes, cutouts that you can add to your bags. There's just a lot of different ways that you can decorate with the plastic ba bags as well. So I hope you found some inspiration today on ways to save your plastic bags. Be sure to check out all the additional tutorials in the description box. And don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and click the bell icon to manage your notifications so you don't miss out on the next experiment. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.